Hello, this is Bugpadazus, and thank you once again for joining me for a Planet Side 2 video. So, as you can see, uh, I've taken a break from World of Tanks, and I've not actually played World of Tanks for some months now. I've kind of fallen back in love with Planet Side 2. Planet Side 2 came out in November 2012, and uh, it was a little bit rough around the edges, and I tried to play it, didn't really get on with it. Even though I've been a huge fan of Planet Side, and I love Planet Side so much, um, Planet Side 2 didn't seem to be quite right for me. It was in beta still, so I thought I'd just put it to one side and then come back to it a bit later on. Which is what I've done back in the summer, and I'll tell you what, it is much better now than it's been uh, ever. So if you've tried it previously and came to the same conclusion as me, you might want to give it another go. If you haven't tried Planet Side 2, um, then carry on watching, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to break down Planet Side 2, how to get started. It's a game with quite a steep learning curve. You can jump in and go and shoot stuff, but really you'd get a lot more out of the game if you understood really what was going on because there's a lot of little touches, there's a lot of little quirks, there's a lot of ways to do things. It's not your typical FPS, it's not even an FPS really. Um, there's a lot going on and what I want to do is uh, just make a series of videos really to try and help um, the complete new newbie to Planet Side 2 or maybe you've been playing for a while um, and you think you, you you know the game pretty well keep watching because I'll tell you what you're still learning things every time I learned something um, really uh, quite new, new recently about engineers and ammunition packages which I will come to in a later video um, which I never knew um, so yeah I, I hope you enjoy this I'm gonna break it down and basically go right from the start and um, Keep watching, see what you think. You might find it of use, you might find it um, not of use. I've only been playing really for a few months, so I'm absolutely not an expert at Planet Side 2. I'm really not. And there's a lot of stuff that I don't know yet. But what I wanted to do was just impart some of the knowledge that I've learnt from playing Planet Side 2, from reading the forums, from asking people. Um, and hopefully it, it will be of, of use because, as I said, it's quite a difficult game to get into and it can be overwhelming running around, you kind of follow everybody else, don't really know why, you get killed, you don't know why, that, that sort of stuff. So I, I'm here to try and help you out. So this is the um, the character selection screen. You can choose between one of three factions. You've got the Varnish Sovereignty, the New Conglomerate and the Terran Republic. Um, the colours you see in the background are the colours predominantly that um, you'll be wearing as a uniform and also the colours that the gun shoots. So Terran Republic's tracer is red, Varnish is purple, New Conglomerate isn't blue as you'd expect but just a kind of a, a whitey yellow colour. Um, I'm not going to bore you too much with the backstory because it's kind of irrelevant unless you're into that sort of thing. Um, basically the Terran Republic came through a wormhole from Earth um, and basically came across uh, a planet called Araxis which had leftover alien technology or Varnu technology. Um, they then kind of uh, split into two and had a bit of a fight. The, the rebels were the new conglomerate or the freedom fighters and then a further split occurred with some humans going into um, the Varnu technology um, and becoming um, uh, real proponents of the uh, Varnu tech. Um, so the differences between the three races, um, in a nutshell, Varnu are kind of laser and plasma weapons. Um, very accurate, not much bullet drop, uh, hardly any recoil. Um, lower damage, I believe, is the way it goes. I don't know much about the Varnu. New conglomerates, um, actually let me do Terran Republic next. Terran Republic are kind of um, large magazines, high rate of fire, lots of bullets being spat out. Um, fast reload, less damage than the new conglomerates uh, which are kind of higher damage per bullet, um, smaller magazines, s shorter rate of fire. Um, so that's really the kind of the differences but between the three. These two have uh, ballistic weapons mainly and the Vanu have uh, a laser stroke plasma. Um, but you know you, you can have quite a few character slots so just uh, have a play and see which one is the most uh, suitable for your playstyle. I'm going to go with the new conglomerate just for now and you click on next then you get a choice of what servers to uh, to join. Um, server population now I'm doing it um, I'm I'm doing it I'm videoing this uh, in EU and uh, the server population at the moment shows low for most of the places frankly it's it's coming up to lunchtime in the UK where I am now population is going to be low but don't let this sway you you're more interested in the ping the lower the ping the better it is as you can see given by the, the numbers here um, these are just the the ones it recommends I don't know how it works out which ones are recommended but if you click on view all servers um, you've got a list of the servers that you can create the character on 
bear in mind if you have a friend who is playing this and you want to play with your friend you need to know what server he is on because each server has its own um, player uh, or character um, database so if you're playing on Woodman and your friends on Ceres for instance you can't play with them at any point ever okay so um, although it's not super important to to pick your uh, your race sorry your server um, in terms of which is the best one, it doesn't really matter unless you have a friend who you specifically want to play with. Um, as I said, lower pings the better, so uh, it doesn't doesn't really matter. You can see I've got a few characters on on these other servers already. Um, what I tend to do is because I have time in the morning sometimes um, to to play, and there's nobody on in, in EU, I tend to uh, to have a character on US West server. Although my ping slightly higher, it means that it's going to be there kind of midnight. Uh, or 11 o'clock at night and there'll be some action going on so you know you uh, you choose whichever region uh, suits you best so I'm, I'm going to pick Cobalt let's go next you put in your character name um, you can't use spaces but uh, I'm just going to put uh, this is a uh, test might well be taken oh no oh no this name is taken it says there in red if it's taken so so let me just put in something I'm, I'm going to delete the character after this anyway choose your gender male or female again doesn't really make any difference I mean to be honest this is all kind of just fluff, doesn't make a lot of difference at all other than the voice it speaks in. These people are wearing helmets most of the time, um, so it doesn't make a lot of difference in terms of what the face looks like. I'm going to skip the tutorial because you can do that in your own time, you don't need me to, to kind of take you through a tutorial. The whole point of the tutorial is for you to learn it. Um, what I want to do is uh, show you the uh, the finer points of Planet Side 2 that you might not be aware of. Okay, now the game crashed on me at that point, and uh, when I logged back in, it um, had me hot dropping in uh, on this continent in the middle of a battle, so I don't quite know <laughs> how that happened. But when you spawn for the first time, you spawn in the uh, warp gate, uh, in your friendly warp gate on one of the continents. So you spawn in one of these things, which is basically a spawn tube. Um, as you can see, it doesn't really do anything apart from this way you appear. Now, if you ever played Planet Side, the original Planet Side 1, um, you would have spawned in what's called the Sanctuary. And for the players who remember that, um, basically the idea of a Sanctuary is gone completely. There is no Sanctuary. What happens is you will spawn in a warp gate on one of the three currently existing continents. Um, each continent is basically a huge landmass where battles take place. So the first thing that I need to do really is let me show you that. So this is the um, this is the uh, I don't know what the terminal's called. I guess it's a warp terminal, warp gate terminal, and this is how you move between continents. Okay, so if you're in a squad and they say, okay, recall to the warp gate, we're going to another continent. What that means basically is you need to go to your map and press M for map. Click on the redeploy button in the top left-hand corner. When you do that, you'll get a countdown eight of, uh, from 10 seconds. And what will happen is you'll get some green circles. Uh, which means that you can recall to the warp gate or to one of the other places nearby uh, use the mouse wheel to scroll out so I can deploy in any one of these places now you notice they're greyed out because the timer is counting up here on the left hand side uh, once that reaches the end then you are able to spawn but you can always respawn back at the warp gate immediately so if you're stuck out in the middle of nowhere for any reason you're out in, in sticks or your squad's left you or you just don't fancy being on this continent anymore you click on the, the redeploy button and you can immediately you always have the option of going back to the warp gate so you just click on deploy in our warp gate and you come back so here we are back again now I just want to go this very very quickly if you want to go to Esme or Amrish which is the other two continents you can just click on warp and what will happen is you will then appear in a warp gate on that continent so again that's a major change from planet side one if you did play planet side one there is no sanctuary, there's no uh, dropping from a transport or whatever it was that took you to one of the ten continents that existed um, in Planet Side 1. This is how you move from one continent to another and there's no other way of doing it. Also in Planet Side 1 what you could do is drive into a warp gate and you use the warp gates to move around uh, because one warp gate will connect you to another warp gate on another continent. Personally I quite like that, I thought that was great. It means you could move vehicles from, uh, from one continent to another. You can't do that as it stands of the date of making this video which is um, October 2013. You can't do that at this point in time. So Wing the Stone Indar. Now down here I should mention is the ability to enter VR training. Now VR training is, is as you can see here as it says it's an environment for weapon and vehicle practice. Let me go into that very quickly because this is quite important for new players and they sometimes miss this. 
Um, again, in Planet Side 1, it was a lot more obvious to get into VR training. It was an actual building, whereas here it wasn't. So as you can see, you're in this kind of virtual environment. It doesn't make any difference what you do in here because it won't affect you. These are sort of dummy targets. And you can see um, what happens is if you shoot your, your own team, um, again, it doesn't act against you, but you're not supposed to shoot your own team. So your NC, your blue and yellow, and you can see NC light assault, and it's in blue. You're not supposed to shoot these guys. If you do that in the game, this is what happens. You'll get a little marker coming up, warning you that you're shooting friendly fire. Things happen on the battlefield. Don't worry too much about it. Try and avoid it if you can. Now, this guy here is a Vanu. Now you notice that when, when you hit him, you get a red cross to show you're actually hitting. Okay, try and go for headshots where you can, you get more points for headshots, you get a bonus. Um, and here's, uh, here's a TR, they're in red. As you can see here, it's a much better view. Here's a TR, uh, heavy assault by the looks of it. And again, try and aim for the head, you can shoot wherever you like. Now, see that little flash? That means his shield's gone down. Um, and I'll, I'll cover that very shortly. But anyway, so what you can do in here is you can go to these various terminals. This is uh, an, an, an infantry equipment terminal. You go up to it, you press E and you get into the different classes that you can choose, which I'll cover um, very shortly. So you can then uh, equip yourself. You can even... Ch I don't know if you can actually choose... No, you can't. So you can't basically choose weapons that you haven't actually unlocked yet, which is kind of a shame, really, because um, it would be a, a good opportunity to try and try stuff that you've not, not yet done, uh, not yet unlocked. Um, so you've got the equipment terminals. Then you have the... Um, the air terminals and also vehicle terminals which are not located in this but you have to uh, move over for them. You'll notice on the heads up display you've got this little uh, little, little uh, pistol marker that means it's equipment terminal um, so you can see them from a distance if you're lost. Um, you have some, some enemy uh, uh, enemies to shoot at here, these are all TR by the looks of it. Uh, so what you can do is if you go out and take a plane out or a vehicle it gives you target practice basically in, um, lets you see how, how easy or difficult it is to, to use, a, use a particular vehicle. You can see in the distance, just down here if I aim, aim my weapon in that direction, those are the ground, ground vehicle terminal and also the air terminal. So you basically go over to those, you can take out uh, vehicles, you can fly them around should you want to. I'm not going to cover that in this video, um, but ju just be aware this is how you do it. You just go, go down to the terminal down there, and you've got the aircraft terminals and also you can get tanks out and other bits and pieces. Again, unlike Planet Side, the aircraft you have access to has changed significantly from uh, from the original game. In the original game, everyone had access to all of the same aircraft, and I think the same vehicles as well, um, up to a point. The main battle tank was different, but in this game it has changed. But again, I'll cover that in another video. So to get back to the um, to where you were previously, you just go back to the, um, I don't know, warp, warp gate terminal, click on E, and now we'll, we'll go back to Indoor, which is where we were previously. So you wait for a second for the map to load. So the different continents, um, Indar is kind of desert, uh, rocky, lots of cliffs and other bits and pieces. Um, you've got uh, Esamir, which is uh, very cold. It's a kind of cold, lots of snow. And Amarish is, is, is you know, it's, it's, as it says here, it's quite lush. It's kind of lots of greenery, trees and everything. Um, they are bringing in a new continent called Hossin um, very shortly, which is again from Planet Side 1, which is lots of jungle and swamps. So that'll be quite good. Okay, let's move on to Equipment Terminal. Now, this is a very important part of the game, Equipment Terminal. You can play different classes. Now, when you first start, um, you don't have any what they call certificates. Now, certificates or certifications are what you can use to unlock other weapons, abilities. You can see down here, uh, for instance, Infiltrator Certs. So this is what you can use to, uh, to unlock uh, those abilities, weapons, and other bits and pieces. Everything in the game, uh, every piece of equipment, or, or class, or vehicles, or aircraft, or whatever, um, you put certs into. Um, so the game is all about gaining XP, or experience, and XP, when you hit a certain amount, converts into a certificate. Um, the rate of 250 XP that you earn gains you one certificate. And 250 XP is kind of, it's not hard to get. 250 XP is maybe one and a half kills, sometimes one kill. Um, base captures, if you get involved with base captures, they tend to be anything from 350 XP upwards. So basically the more, the more active you are and getting stuck in and on the front line, the more certificates you get uh, through XP. The other form of XP is to give you battle rank. So if I press the tab key, you'll see that on battle rank 1, um, this shows you how many, how many um, uh, XP I've got 
to build up towards the next certificate. So when this bar reaches full, I earn another certificate and it goes back to, to nothing and earns back up again. Shows you the score, but as I said, the battle rank in itself doesn't mean a great deal at all, other than battle rank unlocks you um, certain uh, slots here. So if you want to have different loadouts, you get a rank 5 loadout and then a rank 15 loadout. Um, I get 4, 5 and 6 uh, loadout slots because I'm, I'm a premium member, um, otherwise they'll be padlocked as well. So one of the small benefits of being uh, of going up in battle ranks is you get a couple of unlocks. Other than that, really doesn't make a whole lot of difference other than cosmetic stuff, which is pff, really neither here nor there. Um, I'm not going to go into the um, the actual classes itself in any huge detail. I'll save that for another video. Um, but really, all, all you need to know is infiltrator is your basic. Um, uh, actually, let me just equip that and I'll show you. So infiltrator comes with a standard sniper rifle, as you can see. You hold the shift key to steady. You hear the breathing there to steady the sight. Now the NC standard battle rifle is uh, bolt action. Um, the Vanu and the Terran Republic standard sniper rifles are semi-automatic. They all have their um, their pluses and minuses. You can do one-shot kills with a sniper rifle, just go for the head. But just remember the bullet does drop, as you can see, significantly. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, the other thing that you can do is uh, you can cloak. So if you press the F key, which is your ability key across the classes, you can see I've cloaked. In the bottom right hand corner you'll see uh, a counter counting down. Again this goes across all, cl all classes special abilities and tells you how long until your special ability runs out. As you can see, it runs out and I'm back again. But it does charge up. You can put certs into how long you can stay cloaked in the first place and how long uh, uh, it takes for it to recharge. Down the bottom right hand corner you've got your, your ammo in the bit, your gun, and also ammo, uh, how much you have left on you, your, how many grenades you've got there, and also the blue bar is your shield. So if you take uh, damage in the field you'll get shield damage and then once, you're d once your shield's gone you'll kind of shimmer, or you'll see the enemy shimmer who you're firing at, and then you're into health, and health disappears very quickly. Um, health can be recharged of course. So that's what you need to know about the infiltrator class, it's actually pretty good, you can also stab with a knife. Um, you've also got a pistol. So that's what you need to know about infills. Um, they also have something called, um, actually I don't know what the name is, but basically when you fire it, what it does, if I zoom in bottom left hand corner on the minimap, you'll see that what this does is it uh, shows up um, cloaked uh, infiltrators. So worth if you're um, maybe trying to hunt an infiltrator down or you're sniping on a ridge and just want to make sure that uh, they're not sneaking up on you, you can fire this off and it lasts for a certain amount of time and it shows infiltrators within a certain distance. Again, that can be uh, improved by using certificates. Back to the terminal. Light Assault. Light Assault is a pretty cool class. What this does is um, they are used, uh, they use jump jets, as you can see. So I can, by pressing and holding space, I can go up here. So as you can see, this is uh, quite cool. I tend to use light assault for base assaults um, because when you um, spawn uh, uh, outside a base that you're attacking, it's better to maybe just go straight over the walls rather than having to go through a choke point which the enemy are defending quite heavily. So light assault is quite a popular choice, as you can see. This is the warp gate, by the way, that you're looking at. Pretty impressive. Um, you might wonder what might be wondering what these blue blue pads do here, blue and orange pads. Raise me self-explanatory. What they do is they move, take you up, as you can see the yellow, as you can see is moving up, and they bring you down. You just literally jump in them, you get taken up, and you come back down. Useful because you, you do take full damage, so you've got to be careful um, when you come back down. So that that's light assault, also equipped with a pistol. There is no um, there, there is no third utility um, because its utility is having a jump kit uh, jump uh, jump jet. Combat medic. Very cool. So same sort of gun, I think, as the light assault, uh, assault, light assault guy. Um, the ability here, though, is he can resurrect people. So if somebody dies uh, in front of you, you can basically resurrect them uh, in combat by pressing and holding, and a little radial dial goes around, and then they come back to life um, should they accept the resurrect prompt. You can also heal people, um, but it, it's special ability if you press F. What this does, this will heal anybody, as you can see they're glowing, it, it, will, it will heal anybody in a radius around you without you having to use your, uh, your little gun there. So all very useful. Um, my tip is really if you want to um, start off by being useful to your squad without knowing too much about the game and you want to earn good XP, be a medic. 
or, or an engineer for that matter. Because you... I'm just going to move outside where it's a bit quieter. Um, so you will earn quite a lot of good XP uh, initially in the game by playing a medic or uh, an, an engineer. Moving on, engineer, speaking of which. So the engineer um, has the same gun actually as the light assault. Now the engineer is quite quite a cool character uh, cool character to play, as well as um, being able to repair stuff with the nanite uh, the nanite kit here the nanite gun. You can uh, repair vehicles, you can repair maxes, and you can repair terminals and other bits and pieces. Everyone loves the engineers and the medics because they're really good support classes. What you can also do is you can put down ammo uh, kits, as you can see, so people can refill in the field. A very good way of earning XP. But the other thing that yeah, they can do is they can set up turrets. Now this turret, as you can see, changes from red, which means I can't set the turret up here, to green, which means I can, so I put the turret down. It takes a few seconds to generate, as you can see, and then we have an anti-personnel turret. Now, like everything, you press E, and then you've got a little bit of zoom. As you can see, bottom right hand corner, you'll notice that the that there is no ammo limit on this turret, but it does generate heat. So when the heat when the heat reaches the top, it will just shut down and has to cool down. There's a little bit of a shield on here, so it does protect you from small arms fire to a degree, but a sniper can still hit you, and also tanks um, and also larger caliber weapons can also make uh, make mincemeat of you, which is pretty cool. Right, um, the other thing that, th these are jump pads by the way, if I step on it, I'll jump over to this uh, this building over here. I'm not going to do it now because I there's no direct way to come back to the uh, this building unless I, I want to walk. Um, so I don't want to do that just yet. So that's the engineer, another good way of earning XP. Heavy assaults, now this is a favourite of mine. Um, heavy assaults are pretty cool. Um, they get a nice heavy uh, saw. Uh, what does saw stand for? Squad, squad assault weapon I think, but it's basically... Like an M60. Lots of ammo. It comes with bottom right hand corner. You get you get 100 shots in a magazine, so it's really good for not having to reload uh, too too often. Um, you get a decent amount of ammo as well. Now the heavy engineer special ability is the ability to have an extra shield. Um, it's, it's like a, a shield for the shield, if you like. Now what happens is this will run out slowly. It'll run out a lot more quickly if you're taking incoming fire. When the shield expires, which is about to do it disappears and then you're down to your normal shield. The other thing that uh, the heavy engine, uh, the uh, sorry, heavy assault can do is it has uh, an anti-vehicle weapon. Now these do a lot of damage but they're not guided. You can again put certs into it and also put certs into new weapons which become guided and can shoot down aircraft and all the rest of it. So it's just a, a dumb fire as you can see. As you'd expect it drops. Okay so all ballistic weapons in this game they will drop as they travel so you, you have to, to allow for that as you'd expect. I said um, heavy assault is it's quite a favourite of mine. Um, this gun's actually pretty accurate at range if you don't spray. If you just take shots like that it's actually quite effective. By pressing B you can... is it B? Uh, no obviously not on this gun but on some guns if you press B you can switch to single shot rather than automatic. And then finally you've got the Max. So the Max is kind of a, a heavily armoured uh, exoskeleton, if you like. Um, you come with basically um, anti-infantry, scatter cannon, like a shotgun. You come with anti-vehicle, the Falcon. Or you also get the Burster, which is anti-air. Now, on the left hand, you get a choice of... Uh, I think it's limited. Now, I've, I've, I've actually unlocked the other ones, but you do actually start with quite a limited amount of choice on the Max. Um, what I've got here is I've got basically twin twin bursters. I've also got twin falcon should I want it and twin uh, twin shotgun. But I think when you start you can only have one of each. So let me just demonstrate the scatter cannon and the falcon. So on my right arm, is it left arm? Yes, yeah, so on my left arm I've got the shotgun. Doesn't have a lot of ammo uh, before you have to reload. And on the right arm. have the believe, sorry I wasn't paying attention. I have the Falcon which is the anti in the anti vehicle uh, weaponry. Let me just fit the burster. So on the right hand is the burster now which is the anti anti uh, anti air. Bear in mind there's no lock on on the anti air, okay so what you're doing is you're basically firing flak and you have to obviously lead the target if it's moving. Um, 
zero an aircraft around that I can demonstrate. No. Okay. Anyway, so um, maxes are great for inside, but not not so great out in the open because they can be dealt with quite quickly. So they're very good for defending bases, um, especially if you have uh, double shotgun. Uh, very effective indeed. Um, so that's kind of a quick heads up on the on the weapons. Now, don't be too quick to come off the stock weapons you get because unlike other games, for instance, World of Tanks. Um, your stock weapons that you're given for free are actually pretty good. This bolt driver is really good. It can do one 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 shot kills, um, and if you stick with this for the whole of your planet side time, it's not a problem. It's a great gun. Light assault. This this gun kind of gets you by. It's it's fine. Um, it's not a problem. It's all about the sights really. What I would recommend um, in upgrading your your weapons, uh, just as an early point, and again I think I'll put this in another video. This is just to get you off the ground really. If you click on the gun, you can see all the other guns that that you can actually unlock for this, um, and they vary in price. I think this is probably a good time to explain this as well. These are your certs that it will take to unlock it. 250 certificates. At the moment, I've got nothing down here, as you can see. Or I can put some money into the game and I can unlock it using 500 SC. That's about five dollars. I think. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. So it's 500. S, uh, station cash is um, is five dollars. The A the ACX11 is actually a very good gun. Um, what you can do is, if you want to compare the stats between the one you've got and the other ones you want to look at, you click on compare stats here, and you hover. On the left is the one you've got. On the right is the one you want to have. And what Sony have done quite helpfully is it shows you in red if the gun you're looking at is better or worse than the the other gun. So you can see that the ACX11 has a slower rate of fire but does more damage. Slow muzzle velocity, but reloads faster, etc., etc. So you kind of pay your money and take your choice. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. But I would just stick with your your current weapons for now um, because they are actually good enough. Now, after you've chosen your class and you want to go out and have a go, you're you're still kind of stuck here in the in the um, warp gate. So you're thinking, okay, what can I do now? So this is very easy. You press escape. You click on the social button down here. And you'll see the, the, the people who are running squads, who are running public squads, and are advertising for you to join them. You can filter them by continent, that's the continent you're on now, um, by the platoon that you're in, the outfit that, that you're in, or if any of your friends are online. So what you can do here is basically you say, well, I'm, uh, this sounds good, yep, this, this squad sounds good to me, there's two slots left out of 12, I'm going to click on join now. Then what happens is you join the squad, this shows you how many platoons Sorry, uh, yeah, so it shows you uh, what platoon your squad's in. They've got another, uh, they've got a Bravo squad as well. And it shows you how far away those members are. And if you want, you can actually talk to them directly, should you want to, but uh, at this point, you don't. Now, what's different about this now is that you can see where they're in, but also if you look at the map by pressing M, scroll out, providing you've got the filters turned on, you can see where your squad members are. And now, as you can see, there's set green 7 and an 11 and a green 10. Now those correspond to the to the squad numbers and the, the colours. So you've got green, so green 11 was this chap here, and you had an orange 10. So you know where, 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 where these guys are. Let's go back to the map. Can't do it from there. So, um, let me quickly tell you about this as well. These tabs on the right hand side here you can uh, you can change what what you see so you can unclick you don't want to see facility names or the connections allies etc so you can turn those on and off to see whatever suits you I'm not going against the whole resources thing for now because I don't think you really need to know that at this point in time uh, and again I'll, I'll keep that for, for a later video statistics this is how many are on Indar so we're the NC there's we got 31 percent out of the whole population TR are down to 28 and Vanu have the um, the superiority in numbers on this particular continent at 39%. You can also have a look at the other um, uh, drop downs here. The world population, so at the moment more Vanu are logged in on this server than everybody else. And territory control, Vanu seem to um, have by far the most territory on this server at this point in time. Um, you can also drop down at so we're on Indar, you can change this to Esamir, so you can have a quick look at Esamir, see what's going on here. Um, not much going on there, because again, it's the, it's the morning and it's an EU server. Or you can have a look at Amarish. Amarish, again, it's not a huge amount going on, but that's not entirely surprising. Um, okay, so having found your squad, you see they're there, you can do one of two things. You can either click on Squad Deploy, which is available to you if the squad leader is alive, which he doesn't seem to be 
or actually maybe it's because I'm in a max suit. Let me just change. Let's change the infiltrator. Go back to the map. There we go. Sorry, it's because I was in a max suit. So now what I can do, I can click on squad deploy. Now what squad deploy does is it will immediately put me um, next to where the squad leader is. It shows me where it is. There's a timer counting down at the top, as you can see. So in five seconds I'll um, appear where the squad leader is. The other thing you can do is press instant action, which means I don't care where you drop me, just drop me into a battle. I don't tend to use that because that's very random and I like to know where I'm going to drop into and what I'm going to drop into. The other thing you can do is if you look down here in the, in the bottom left hand corner it says press insert to quick deploy near the squad leader. That's kind of the same thing as squad deploy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, drop in. So let me go back to the map. I'll click on squad deploy and we'll let it drop in and now you'll be able to see what a hot drop looks like. This is pretty cool if you've never seen it before. So it's just loading up the particular sector of the map on Inda and it will appear in a pod falling from the sky. As you can see now you can have a certain, certain amount of steerage available as you can see so I'm just moving it around. Boom. There we go. And we've now uh, appeared near the squad leader. See there's a member of the squad. And the squad leader, if you look in the bottom left hand corner on the mini-map, Vanu there. Uh, there's my squad leader over here. See the star. As you can see, even though it's quite quiet on the server, there's still quite a lot going on. So I'm going to cloak and I'm going to move to a less busy place where I can kind of snipe. Because I'm I've uh, launched in as, as an infiltrator, so I'm going to snipe. Now you might think, okay, so I've dropped into this, what the hell am I doing? What, what should I be doing? What's going on here? Okay, so let me just uh, give you a quick overview. You can see um, this is the uh, uh, an NC base. It's now our colours, blue and yellow, so that's fine. We, we know that's cool. You'll see that there, there are three areas. You've got this area here, C, you can see in the middle. You've got uh, B. Uh, in the middle of my sights there as well, and you've got A. Now these are capture points. Again, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail here, but basically the aim of the game is to capture these points by moving up to them and standing next to them. Now you'll see in the, in the, the left-hand corner here, it says, it shows that they're blue, okay? So it means that because we are blue and yellow, we actually control those points, um, so we, we, which is uh, obviously a good thing. That base is ours. Now, if a member of the enemy was to come along and contest those points, they would start flashing and then change to that faction's colour, purple for the Vanu or red for the TR. Um, so what's happening now is we are, um, I think we're just moving on to, to the next base. Let me just click on the map, find out where we are. So we're here pointing that way and we're moving on to the next base which appears to be over here. Now these lines are uh, lattice lines. What it means is that you can't just go and capture a base over here because you don't have, um, you haven't captured a base next to it. So for instance, we can capture Allerton Botany Wing, but we can't capture Allerton Bio Lab because we don't have a direct link with one of our bases. Um, I can't remember if uh, if Planet Side One had that. I think it might have, um, but uh, yeah, it, it, ju it just prevents what's called ghost hacking, which is basically um, you can get hacked from from behind, basically, and end up losing lots of territory to just one or two people. Um, it can be a bit frustrating. This directs the flow of the battle a lot better as well. You're guaranteed, you're not guaranteed, you're more, more likely to have good fights um, by directing the flow of the battle so everyone's fighting in, in kind of the, the, the same area. Um, so that's that um, on, on here. You'll notice that these flashing um, look, like, look like raindrops. So this is where there's current battle going on. If you hover over this on here, on the right hand side, it gives you an idea of what's going on in that region um, of the, of the uh, you see the outline there around the, the, the hexes that you have there. You'll see that the, um, the TR are capturing from the Vanu. Um, there's a 50-50 population split. Um, there's 48 enemies detected, which means obviously there's 48 plus of TR and Vanu. If I hold it on here, for instance, you'll see that we've got 1 to 12 allies, that's us, the good guys, obviously, and you've got 1 to 12 enemies as well. So it gives you a good idea of what sort of fight is going on here. This is obviously uh, quite a big one. Um, the different bases give you different benefits. So for instance, this one here, as you can see, bottom right hand corner, it gives you a turret heat reduction if you own the amp station. The bio lab gives you 
health regeneration, which is really useful. Then you've got a tech plant. Uh, where's the tech plant there? So a male tech plant here allows you to to roll out main battle tanks. Um, so the Vanguard for the NC, the Prowler for the uh, Turn Republic, and also the, uh, the Mag Rider for the Vanu. If you don't hold a tech plant on a region, you can't roll those tanks. So it's actually quite a huge benefit. So that gives you some idea of what's going on there. So really, the, the best bit is to get into a squad and then um, to basically roll out and, and uh, follow orders, follow the, the rest of your squad. You will be on voice comms as well. So hopefully if you're on a decent squad, what they'll be using is, is voice comms. How do you get to voice comms? Just to make sure it's switched on. You basically uh, click on escape, go to settings, go to voice, and make sure enable voice is ticked on. Now what happens there, it means that you'll be able to hear the transmissions of your squad or platoon leader and it will give you a, a good direction. I would highly recommend you turn this on and if you're not in a squad which is using uh, voice comms, get out of that squad, get to another one. How do you leave a squad? Very easy, go back to the social tab down the bottom. You click on leave platoon at the bottom and then you just go back to, to that window. So let me just do that. Then you can have a look here and you can see what other uh, platoons or squads are available. And again, it's very easy to do. If you want to join an outfit, that's much. Uh, uh, that's basically a collection of people um, with with a with a common tag. So, for instance, uh, let me just show you somebody with a tag, which they don't seem to have here at the moment. But you have a tag. It's it's like a, a corporation, Neve, or uh, um, I'm trying to think of other examples of other games that I've played, um, which I can't at the moment. Never mind. Um, but yeah, so it's basically it's a group of people who hang together. It's very easy to to hook up with them in game, to get in squads with them in game. You've got an outfit voice chat, and also an outfit chat window as well. Um, the other thing to mention, if you uh, have uh, uh, a hankering to make YouTube videos from your uh, footage, you can do it. They've given you the option to do it in game. I've never used this. I'm recording this with Frap, so I don't know what the quality is like, um, but it's there. It looks pretty cool. Uh, let me just go through this very quickly. You can have a look at your profile. Um, you can see uh, what you've earned and how it's going on. If you um, uh, own a premium account, you get more resources and more experience, with, which I've got. You can check your stats, which is quite nice if you're a stats junkie. On your weapons and vehicles and everything else, it's pretty cool. You've got a leaderboard. You know, uh, I don't really care about the leaderboard to be honest. It's um, kind of meaningless to me but if you're into that sort of thing and you've got to the dizzy heights of uh, BR100 and uh, you want to see yourself on it then go for it. Um, boost is uh, a boost that you can uh, buy um, in order to increase your experience and resource gain. Uh, you tend to get those free from time to time if you play enough so uh, keep an eye out for those. You've got a map, you've got different classes here. So. Um, after you've been in battle for a little bit and you started earning your your, um, your XP, you start getting certificates. And what you can then do is you can um, go into uh, your cert screen here and start improving your uh, your class and the various bits and pieces that they can use. Now a lot of these have been given you just uh, have been given for you for one certificate just to get you off the ground. So for instance, a primary use of an infiltrator is to hack equipment terminals and turrets. Um, you only need to put one certificate into it, into that to enable it to basically get it up and running. So they've obviously uh, give, given that to you on a plate. The tool slot, the recon detect device you saw earlier, just uh, shows you um, uh, any infiltrators uh, near you. The ability slot, you got the hunter cloaking device. Again, this this makes the device if you just hover it, it shows you um, the rate at which your uh, your cloak regenerates basically and speeds it up. Your suit slot, um, again you can take your choice. You only can have one of these, you can only wear one of these things at a time and same with all of these, you can only actually equip one of these slots at a time. You've got one slot and you can have one thing in it. I tend to go for nano weave armor on most of my classes really. Um, again it depends on what's important to you, what role you're playing, but you've got different loadouts for different things. You've got grenades and uh, you've got your bouncing Betty mines as well. These do vary from, from uh, class to class. The light assault certs will be slightly different. Um, you've got the jump jets for instance. Uh, again these will regenerate and last longer depending on how much search you put into them. The drifter jump jets are um, slightly different to the main jump jets. Um, they are used for more distance, so, so more horizontal rather than vertical. Personally I, I think the vertical is, is better uh, than uh, than that. So there are some differences here but again I'm not going to get into these too much at this point in time. This is just to get you off the ground, to get, get you up and running. Um, combat medic if you were starting, just starting a game, I would put your certs into Medic or Engineer. 
uh, not both because you won't be generating many certs to start off with so just concentrate on one don't spread your certs too thinly you just end up getting frustrated um, so the medic certs are quite important I think you basically got ignore that one ignore that one for now your medical applicator are really important this will basically heal people faster um, and uh, will cool down quicker and also it will heal them um, so when they uh, sorry it will resurrect them so when they resurrect they will resurrect with higher um, uh, health points as well ability slot nano regen device that's when you regenerate everyone uh, around you um, and again you've got your suit slots again go for nano weave armor because as a medic you're going to be on the front line a lot and you've got the other bits and pieces here so that's really what I would go for um, just to start off with go for the medic or the engineer and I think you'll, you'll get up and running quite quickly you do generate certs quite quickly if you if you're not very good at fighting or maybe your computers not hasn't got a great deal of performance go around with with a group of people um, who are just basically capping bases and you will get XP just for being in the area just make sure that that you're, you're in you're in the base uh, when it flips over to your control um, so that's that pretty much I don't want to go on for too long on this video but I just want to um, really just make the video to make sure that people understand how to get up and running if they've never played the game before um, it's uh, it's a really good great, great game it's a fantastic game and it's so deep and you can just um, you can play for hours on end and just lose time uh, because there's so much to do you know you can you can fly you can go in vehicles I'm not even covered those yet because as I said uh, I only want to keep this as short as possible and uh, just to really uh, give you the basics so what I'm going to do now just to demonstrate what I showed you earlier um, I'm going to go to the map I'm going to click on redeploy so now what this does is it counts down and it will basically um, despawn me here and what it will do is it will make me uh, it will give me a choice of where to appear next so I'm going to zoom out, move down here, and as I said, you can appear in the warp gate any time you like, as you can see here. So there we go, back in the warp gate. You can't harm anybody in the warp gate, by the way, so you can fire them. It really makes no, no difference at all. Um, you don't get penalised for doing that like you would if you're outside of the warp gate, uh, and they don't take any damage. But just remember that friendly fire is on outside of the warp gate, so, so be careful when you fire. The other thing that I didn't know that I'm going to leave you with is sometimes you hear people saying I need ammo, or I need healing, or um, or I, I need a ride. I didn't know how to do that when I first started, but you press the V key. V key then brings up a menu there, um, so you say thanks by pressing 1. <laughs> Suits you got your bonus check. Or you call out for health. Someone patch me up! And basically people in your vicinity can hear that. So medics and engineers, if they're worth the all, are listening out for those calls and they'll they'll come and help you. Um, a useful one is is number eight. Sorry, my mistake. Which you will probably get quite used to because you end up shooting people by accident or even killing people by accident. Um, it's not the biggest deal in the world, as I said, but just uh, just be careful with it. So I'm going to uh, leave it at that for now. I think I've covered most of the uh, the important stuff. You'll find yourself um, not really understanding how you get in and out of bases. Um, and how to defend bases properly but really all I would say for now is till I make the next video is um, just kind of follow the others follow people around um, maybe your squad members so you're following around people who, who understand what they're doing and you'll be able to get a lot of tips and find your way around because all the base layouts are kind of different um, bio labs are the same as each other tech labs are the same as each other etc but they are very different from each other so what I would say is um, follow people around and try and keep keep your your eyes peeled um, well, that, that's that's pretty much it from me. Um, I hope you find that useful. If you like the video and want to see more, I will um, uh, expand the series and cover sort of the classes. It'll be, be a lot more sort of combat, um, and I'll give you more explanations of how to attack and defend bases, what the base layouts are like, because it, as I said, it's kind of a steep learning curve. So as I said, if you want to see more, press like, leave comments. Um, if if uh, there's enough uh, enough demand there, then I'll do another one. Um, but anyway, so look, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will catch you next time. Cheers.